Isn't it interesting how weeds in the wilderness can be very beautiful, but when they're on a walking path that we use every day, not quite so much. I probably spend too much time weeding this time of year, but the truth is, I really do like the look of a clean path carved out through these flowering weeds. The truth is, just clearing the paths and the flower beds around here are enough weeds for our chickens to enjoy eating and scratching through without being buried by them. Okay, maybe they get buried a little. Back over here on our side, we have enough flowering weeds to really give this place that authentic wilderness look too. But hey, you can't have too many flowers. Wendy just bought this all-in-one seed mix for shady areas. So I'll be finding some free patches here and there to use this down here. Our goats will eat the weeds too, but they're a little more picky, especially if you just throw a heap of them in on the ground for them, instead of holding them up one by one for convenient sniffing and nibbling. Indigo.
Glad to see you like this one. What about the rabbits, you might ask? Sure, we'll give them some, but they don't really tear through them like the chickens do. Our chickens are really industrial strength weed eaters. Marigold. These rabbit tractors allow the rabbits to eat the weeds a little more efficiently, at least. I do have some mixed feelings about adding to our chicken coop sculpture wall. These, these wonderful branches were part of one of my very favorite rhododendrons. It died back. I waited two springs, hoping to see green shoots on them, but they were truly dead. Although I would have preferred to have them remain as part of a majestic living rhododendron, being able to use them this way is personally very satisfying. I've already screwed the branches together and attached a hanger, so now all I have to do is hang it up.
Here's what's left of that rhododendron after I cut off the dead parts. There is new growth, so hopefully one day it might grow back into its former glory. For me, this installation is a little reminiscent of a contemporary artist from Seattle. His name is Chihuly, and he works in glass. He creates, among other things, these really crazy chandeliers and wall-mounted pieces that incorporate abstract, organic, really complex forms. If you're curious, you should check out his work. I'll put a link in my video description for you. Believe it or not, maple trees can be weeds. They're so prolific out here that we have to be careful not to let them just take over everything. Right behind me, I've got a whole bunch of volunteer maple seedlings that are growing right up against our greenhouse. Obviously, that's not the best place for them. I do try to get after these things when they're small like this because they're just easier to get out of the ground and when they're larger, you might not be able to get all of the roots and then you've got a problem that just keeps perpetuating itself. I have let some of those maple seedlings get larger, and eventually I'd like to transplant some of them out to our forest. I'm afraid they probably wouldn't survive the first hot, dry summer, not after their roots had been so recently disturbed. My plan is to transplant them first into some good-sized containers that I can keep up where the water is for our chickens and goats. I'm up there every day, and it'll be easy for me to make sure they get all the water they need especially during the summer. It'll give them a chance to re-establish a nice robust root system. Roots that will be well contained and easy to keep intact when they finally do go out to their final home. Actually, the best time to transplant or prune a tree is in the fall just after it's lost its leaves or in the spring before they actually sprout. It's just less shock for their system when the trees are in their dormant state. So this isn't the best time to transplant a tree. As a result, some of these might not make it, but I won't be too disappointed. Like I said, these trees do grow like weeds out here.